Banjo and Kazooie, a Honey Bear and Regal that starred in classics like Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tooie. Two amazing N64 platform games developed by Rare. With excellent control, beautiful graphics, wonderful music, and witty humor, these games are charms that will forever be a part of our childhood. Gotta love how the music changes to suit the environment like when you dive underwater. How everyone speaks gibberish. And how Kazooie throws you behind her back when running up steep hills. So whatever did happen for classic stars. Banjo-Kazooie, Grunty's Revenge. Two months after Banjo-Kazooie, Gruntilda, trapped underground by a boulder as a result of her battle with the Baron Bird, is reincarnated as a robot, kidnaps Kazooie, and takes her back in time, hoping she'd never meet Banjo so she'd never get imprisoned. As Banjo, it's your job to rescue her by also traveling back in time to stop Gruntilda. So yeah, no Kazooie. That means no flying and None of her crazy moves until you rescue her, making the game even more bland until you do so. The game is way too short, unless you want to collect all 10 billion items that artificially lengthen it. Two justifications as to why it stinks. Notes, Jinjos, Jiggies, Totems, Honeycombs, it never ends. There's simply too many, and the game focuses too much on collecting them. By the time you're done, the Earth will be a moon run by red gorillas and virtual boys. And I am not joking. Most are just out in the open too and don't require much skill to obtain. Why can't I restart? I want to restart, damn it! Love how they only gave Bozai a frontal sprite so you can't talk to him anywhere but front. Hate how you have to talk to him. He's so fucking annoying. Shut up. Shut up! Your first fight with Plungo is a joke. You jump onto these platforms to avoid all his attacks, then hit him when his shield is down. Do this three times. It's pathetic. No splash, swim, or sink? What? Would have been Diddy Kong Pilot with Telesensor Control, but became Banjo Pilot with D-Pad Control when Microsoft bought Rare from Nintendo. This unbearable disappointment is the blandest nightmare. AI lacks challenge, even for a kid's game. Level design is bad, control is too sensitive. And why do you slow down when you fly over grass? If this was a kart racer, the grass would slow you down because of friction, but this is a plane racer. And a bird in which? Flying in planes? I know video games aren't logical, but this crosses a line. Attacking enemies from the rear is almost impossible, and you get too many ice eggs that only affect enemy attack. Graphics and music are fantastic, but the game is still so territorial bear markings. Banjo Kazooie, nuts and bolts. A game with beautifully weird and shiny graphics that took a massive diarrhea on my childhood. Grass is lusciously green and water is sparklingly blue, but almost nothing is like the classics. That would have been fine. Super Mario Sunshine is a masterpiece and it's very different from the classics, but this game strays way too far from its roots and almost everything that is new, which is almost everything, is shitty. When you start the game, it seems like it's going to be a classic Banjo game, but it's nothing but a lie. This is not Banjo-Kazooie. The Banjo universe is now an 80% vehicle-based Play-Doh Lego sandbox design Disaster, that's barely a platform game for it lies too heavily on vehicles. Diddy Kong Racing has Banjo and Kart, Plane, and Hovercraft, and then there's Banjo Pilot. Think that's enough vehicles? The story is about a battle between Banjo and Grunty on who owns Spiral Mountain. It's odd, but it works. However, there's only five worlds. Camera can be annoying. Grabbing poles and ladders can be awkward. Puzzle pieces don't preview levels anymore. You can make the text so small, you would need a telescope to read it. Cutscenes are a bit choppy. And while all classic characters look nice. All new ones look shit. Everyone's so fucking cube, especially Banjo, gives Blockhead a whole new meaning. And Lord of Garbage is a ripoff of Mike from Reboot. Okay, guess walking through the door wasn't cool enough. Oh look, Banjo and Kazooie, flying in an airplane. That makes perfect sense. Kazooie doesn't fly or do any of her crazy moves anymore. She does fuck all but use a wrench. Now she's just a bird in a backpack. Even Banjo's old moves are gone. He also does fuck all. Here we go! Whee! That was awesome.
love the shadows. They're so realistic, like the tightrope walking. It's cool that you can infinitely customize vehicles, but as long as you max out a stat or even use the default ones, you'll get the job done, eliminating any need for creativity. You're only allowed to use this shit wagon at Showdown Town, and these Kingdom Hearts gummy ship clones have the same system, parts, and annoyance. They're definitely superior, but their handling is still total shit no matter how many times you customize them. Some too responsive, some not responsive enough. They're stiff and slippery, turn over from everything, and stop by even the smallest nick of the environment. Sometimes they get stuck under full on debris. You son of a damn. You stupid. Fight! You daughter of a bitch. Sometimes they get stock overfall and debris. Fuck! 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 Then there's the green water that deliberately worsens control as if it wasn't bad enough, and enemies that follow you until they cause pure havoc. Fucker noodle! No, not the green water. Oh, come on! You don't have to over overdo it! They wouldn't be such a pain in the fucking ass if you didn't need them to carry objects that never want to stay inside! Damn it! Uh, perhaps the physics are too realistic, and you have to be so close to the objects to zap them or you'll zap your vehicle instead. The game is a mess. I ditch them and go exploring, but then I can't complete the repetitively tedious missions that are nothing but torturous racing, redundant shooting galleries, and ignominious fetch quests. It's all incredibly bland and unimaginative, except the domino one. That one's cool. Nevertheless, they're all trial and error, and because even the smallest tweaks to your vehicles can make big differences, you'll be in the damn garage is more than the missions. Going back and forth for further adjustments, it's fucking annoying. Showdown Town, the ugly hub world, is basically the only place with platforming, an excuse to call this a platform game. Nevertheless, this is what the entire game should be like, but not as rudimentary and more diverse, with lands covered with snow, trees, and lava. The vehicles could have been intertwined with puzzling platform elements rather than stupid missions. But as it stands, it's a wasted opportunity and a disgrace to the bear's legacy that needs to be rammed up a big bear's bum.